All right, he's got his 17 kills here. R insane Q, that's game-winning stuff. Dodging absolutely every skill shot. Hey, Nathan here, helping you become a better jungler. Today's pro review is going to be on formerly FPX TN world champion from 2019, famously played with Dwayne B. This video is going to be a little bit different from my other pro reviews talking about, you know, the fundamentals, you know, getting to your camps on spawn. This is a lot of sort of the opposite approach in terms of my coaching. This is a little bit hard to teach. This is very hard to teach. This sort of stuff requires a lot of game sense, intuition, champ mastery. But I sort of want to highlight here, sort of give it, it's very refreshing sometimes to watch these players. Um, I call it the LPL Chinese aggression, where they're just looking to fight all the time. They're pushing their limits. It's, it's not completely reckless, although it can look that, and sometimes it is. But it's it's very important to sometimes get in this mindset. Sometimes we do we do play too conservative, and sometimes I, I I suffer from this me playing too conservative in my games, and sort of showing you what's possible. And maybe you know, let's say you're maybe struggling and ranked a bit, maybe you know, switching up, trying trying this play style, getting more aggressive. Talking about risk in the last podcast that I did with Curtis, that will be linked somewhere. You know, talking about, you know, the, the ups and the downs, but this is sort of just showing you, you know, what's possible. So again, I'm going to sort of title this, you know, the LPL aggression. What does it look like? What does it look like from a jungle perspective? One thing to note here is that these champions that he does play in this these reviews, Viego and Kindred, these champs are really good at doing this and can turn games really quickly from doing this. You know, I personally play Rek'Sai a lot and uh, this, this sort of just can't get away with doing this because Rek'Sai is really ultra-reliant. And um, I can't sort of just run around killing everyone. You know, once you're in, you can only really kill one target as Rek'Sai. So I, I tend to definitely play a bit more structured League of Legends. But again, the mindset here is really good. You know, just pushing the limits, seeing what you can do. Let's jump in, guys, and let's see what we can learn from top esports Tian. First game demonstrating the LPL Chinese aggression. This is Tian. This is his Viego. We're going to start with this is his rune skill order item build. And a bit of level one, a little bit of a level one biff here. They love to see this in high elo, Korea, Challenger in China, and they get one, two, three kills, and lots of flashes. All right, so first thing to note here, guys, I see these type of VODs on, on YouTube a lot, and, you know, sometimes a lot, I really dismiss these type of VODs because I'm like, okay, you know, he's got three kills here. You know, they've got a huge lead. Like, this is going to be a real overstomp. This is actually not the case for this VOD. Uh, he does die a lot. There's a lot of chaos here that we're going to be looking at and see how he thrives in it. Continues that LPL aggression. Um, so this is not just a rollover stomp game. You know, they actually at one point are pretty far behind. One thing I want to note here in terms of learning about how to play level one invade fight situations is if you guys played MMOs, you know, you're like a tank and, you know, you've like a, a tank and an off tank and someone tanks all the damage and then they like run away, you know, so... What he's doing here, and it's really, really well played. They could actually get zero kills here. But if you actually look at their tier, he's literally like low HP. Everyone else would be running away now, right? You guys would be running away. But he like literally wants to bait. Look at the way the enemy team's moving here, their positioning. He comes up here. He gets as low as he can. He knows he has flash. Bam, instant flashes, and then Zizia flashes. Because what is what is the monkey brain tell us, guys, in League of Legends? Low HP target, I go kill. He's like activating the monkey brain for the enemy team. They get in a really vulnerable position here, and then they get three kills here. So this is actually all Tian executing this for his team. He could have easily ran away here and nothing would happen, but it's because he baits, he gets low HP. Again, sort of that MMO tank mindset. It's like tanking towers as well as League, right? It's like someone tanks a tower, and then you know they drop aggro, and you juggle the aggro. That's, that's the way it works. All right, his bot lane gets a ward on the Xin Zhao red, so we should know where the Xin Zhao starts. He starts red. Uh, just another thing to note here, sometimes people don't really know this, but always smite your first buff, especially if you don't get it, unless you get a hard, hard, hard leash, but you know, you're just getting one person leash when there's top lane perspective here. That's, this is old technology. People will like hold the smite for the big Krug or the big romp, but just get that right off the map ASAP, get your next camp, get that level two damage. Let's go. All right. So there's red Krugs, Raptors. <clears throat> Looking for level three gank somewhere, mid potentially. Looks like they're ping for wards. So just, just here, just checking as well. He might've missed this, but you see how corky here are now. 
uh, goes out missing out of here, vision. We could actually assume that this is probably watered. Um, yeah. So that's why it's watered. So that may be a little bit of a map awareness problem there from Tian, but, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you miss that things when you're on your camps, right? But that does make sense why that ward is there. All right, looking for a level three gank top. The wave is pretty pushed up. There is a pretty big minion wave for the enemy team. It's always scary to gank big minion waves. Trinium is level two. Darius is level three. Darius tries to go for the 1v2 outplay. Turns back, gets a bit greedy there, the Darius, and then Tien gets to pick up another kill. I just want to quickly note here, especially in my games, I used to overthink these type of ganks all the time uh, when I was like relearning the game when I came back. Because um, I'm like, okay, well, like, how do they know um, that I am, you know, it's pretty obvious that I'm going to come gank this potentially, you know, like, why is Darius not backing off? Like, no one's going to back off ever in solo queue, right? So this is a good gank. I mean, he's pushed up. Darius's wave's in a, you know, pretty vulnerable state. And it, it does work. I mean, this could have definitely not worked. You know, I wouldn't say this is like really good fundamental League of Legends. Um, it's definitely, again, we're, again, refreshing LPL aggression. We're just purely looking at this, what's possible? What's possible in our solo queue games? I just want to quickly note here as well, look at, look at Tian's pings here, guys. He literally pings. The blue buff, he's already telling his team what Xin Zhao's reaction to him showing top here is. Really, really good jungle fundamentals here. Given that inf providing that information to your team, really important. So he's already prepared to lose his bot side because obviously we know Xin Zhao's path in towards bot side. So gets this kill, resets, gets a sheen. Ari solo kills the Corky. So looking to go about to defend his camps. So his bot lane comes to defend because we know that Xin Zhao's here and Xin Zhao was on the grump and then he backs off. He loses his blue buff. Hits the plant. The crab has just been taken. He is very strong right now. We should remember Xin Zhao has not based at all here, guys. So they're going to slaughter this fight even though they're the same level. There's a huge item gap here. <clears throat> And then they don't really think about bot moving, and then he dies. So, yeah, again, this is what I'm talking about, guys. It's not just a nice, simple game. All right. The key thing here, guys, this is our first demonstration of LPL aggression. How many of you would just go start hitting the Grumpier? Right? See how he's, he's identifying he's super strong right now. What he wants to do, he wants to get in Xin Zhao's face. He wants to punish him. Remember, Xin Zhao skipped camps to come to this, this blue blue as well. Um, you know, he's, I believe he's... Is his, did he have, I don't think we saw him. I don't know if we saw him at red or anything like that. But basically he's he's looking to get aggressive. He's un identifying he has an item advantage and he wants to get in Xin Zhao's face here. I could see so many people just be like, okay, I'm just going to get the Gromp. But he wants to as well, look at mid as well, guys. He's looking to protect mid. It's really good to hover, you know, pushed up landers when you know that the junglers come in there. So again, this would not be a potential option here if, um, um, if he didn't come here, he, didn't, he just did the cromp. And I mean, obviously, you know, he misses, you could say, well, Nathan, he missed the bot. This is a bad play. It's like, again, get let's get the mindset here, the LPL aggression. We're stronger. Let's fight. Waves pushed up, hover. We're not going to let, you know, since I got this free gank off because we know that we're here. That's the key mindset I want to get across here with this video, guys. All right. So he dies. Karma chases the Ari around. Coming straight top here. Bit of LPL aggression some from the Xin Zhao there as well. They dive top. The game's getting messy, guys. And this is what we're talking about. Messy, messy game. Darius finishes off those minions. He's going to pick up this kill. Darius is making T and work for this kill a bit. He's level three by five minutes, just a note here, guys. There's the two levels of differentiation here. Places the ward for vision as he needs a flash. No, Viego double range gets the job done. All right, so back to camps. Nothing really to do here. Krugs, his bot dies. Raptors. Does crab. So 
So he completely decided not to go to his bot camps at all here. His bowling did just die, so Karma definitely could look to contest the him on his bot camp. So it looks like he's not interested in going for those bot camps at all. He's just looking to come kill top here. So, I mean, really, there's nothing really for him to do right now. Um, obviously, he can't go to his bot side because his bot side, he's probably losing it right now. I mean, based on the map state, looking at bot. So he's just chilling here. Probably worth checking Zinzao's top camps now. I believe his Gromp would be up, Mr. Tian. Yep, looks like now he's looking to come here. And the Gromp is up. Smarts it away from the Zinzao. Needs to be very careful. Top lane looks like it's collapsing. Flashes, bam. Ari comes here, cleans up some kills. Then Ari gets herself killed. So again, guys, the game's getting getting pretty dirty. We're getting dirty this game. Uh, takes his wolves, looking to help his Jin bot here. He is one camp off level six. A fundamental I always talk about is get level six before you make a play. Um, but again, he's he's really aggressive. He's looking to fight. He's looking to help his Jin here. And then that he able to die. So, yeah, this is a really poor death. I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, Tian's doing well right now. Like, I mean, the fact that he even goes for a... So, if you think about it here, that you have two mindsets in terms of the way you walk. If you're walking here, you're defending. You're helping the Jin. If you're walking here, you're ganking. I don't know how he sees any gank threat here. I mean, obviously, Xin Zhao most likely is bot side as well. So, this is pretty poor by Tian, obviously. But, I mean, this guy just, he just wants, he's looking for girls. He's blood hungry. So, then he dies here. He's one capo level six. So, this is definitely some some errors from Tian here. Probably didn't need to do that. All right. So, map's looking pretty difficult. He's level five at eight minutes. Definitely not doing too hot for experience. Comes here. They lose Dragon. He just goes topside. Does his Raptors. Doesn't even do his red buff. He's just looking to, again, keep that aggression. He wants this, his damn crab. Ari pops her ult. Darius flashes. Zinzao sees him top, so they ping in. Looks like Zinzao's looking to trade, take his bot camps. And, like, again, the fact that he even goes for this is just crazy to me, you know? It's like... <laughs> He just he just thinks he's you know potentially greedy recall and doesn't even go for the camps, he's just going straight for the kill. Alright, so his bolo probably shouldn't be fighting here. They're trying to defend the camps for Xin Zhao, but they're just gonna die. So again, game's looking pretty rough. He takes the top camps from the Xin Zhao. And they go for a repeat gank top here. So, I mean, right now, if you identify what we call here strong side, weak side, it looks like that Tian's mindset right now is he wants a strong side top, denies many minions as well. I mean, Tritium is losing a lot of minions right now through this. I mean, the Darius, not the Tritium. Yeah. And then we also know that he has no flash, so very easy kills. So we get another kill. All right, reset for Sundra. All right, great, great, great reset here, guys. I mean, we've, we've, we've talked about, you know, some maybe some not so good fundamentals in terms of ganking, but in terms of resetting here, Really good reset here. He's not wasting time for his um, his Rift Herald here. He's not wasting time on his camps. He's just like, okay, I have Mythic. I want to keep the LPL aggression going. Let's reset that straight away. Bam, Sundra completely goes straight back top side. Again, his strong side and his top here. He just doesn't even care about his bot side of the map at all. I mean, complete trade sides in that situation. Zinzia takes the Herald. Yumi jumps on Viego. Again, here we go. Let's go for the fight. Bam, dead. Really good W there with the Xin Zhao body. Viego, Yumi, obviously very, very strong combo together. 
So Yumi's sort of just deciding, okay, see you later, Jin. Jumping on the Viego. Here we go. All right, so Tian's looking for, again, looking to get pretty aggressive here. He's in Zinzao's jungle, even though we know Zinzao's off reset. Yep, this is a bit aggressive, Mr. Tian. But again, just, just displaying guys the mindset. This guy's not letting up, you know? Obviously, a champ, you know, and I talked about this at the beginning of the intro, a champ like Viego, you know, the Kindred, these champs are very good at doing stuff like this. You're not going to be able to run around and do this on champs like Sejuani. Reset. Gets a reset. Ends up dying here. Sort of baits the Yumi there. LPL aggression. Here we go. Comes down bot here. Clearing camps. We're in a three versus four fight. Going for it. Look at the click in the buttons, guys. This is what we're talking about. He's just confident. Champ mastery right here. This stuff just wins games. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, again, Viego's very, very good at doing stuff like this. But let's just watch this again. So he goes on the Karma. Straight for the Zin Zhao here. Gets that. Just runs straight onto here. Gets the Karma reset. Kites back. Incredible. He's 10 and 4. Straight to the Raptors, wasting no time. Straight to the counter jungle in. Trinomir gets the top tower. Obviously, Darius sort of conceded that. Would you go to your Grump here, guys, or would you look to dive bot here? I mean, obviously, we know that someone's going to have to attend to the bot wave, but there you obviously seen is on scene on a ward there, so there's probably not much you can do there. How the enemy team's going to come defend that. Straight looking for the Karma here. The aggression is just it's just unbelievable to me, guys. Just running around, going for kills. I mean, it just makes you want to play Viego in a way, right, guys? I mean, again, there's, there's very few champs that can do stuff like this. And, uh, yeah, the game's pretty much, I'd say, a wrap at this point. All right, that's it for the first demonstration here, guys, this game. Uh, I think he ends the game 16 and something. Uh, still dying. Gets really fed here, but they end the game at, you know, 20 minutes or so. Let's take a look at game number two of the LPL aggression mindset. All right, game two, Kindred. This is versus the Lee Sin here. These are his builds, rune, item, skill order, all the good stuff. Doing a bit of a late invade onto his red at 120. So typically, Lee Sin's actually pretty good into uh, Kindred. So I'm, I'm somewhat surprised by this. Definitely, I mean, Lee Sin's obviously the kick in general, can kick him out of his ult, Kindred and stuff, and Kindred can't really cut the Lee Sin because he has the ward hop and the Q. But they just go straight up here. I love the aggression from the Trinity. They're just going for the one for one. He gets the mark. That's a very successful early game, I'd say, for the Kindred already. Probably not going to be able to do this red buff because he's going to get hit by that. And Nah has some pretty good range and he doesn't have W, the Kindred. So he's just coming here. Just going to get level three, I assume. That's always what you do here. Blue is Gromp reset. So this is disastrous now, a little bit. You can hear Tian, I think, a little bit frustrated in the. And his mark there. And mid gets solo killed. All right, so I think he just would assume that Lee Sin's just going to be pathing from bot to top. Because we also saw that Lee Sin didn't go to his red buff out of base. So it looks like we definitely know Lee Sin went to his blue right now. So coming down here is just doing a Raptors. Looks like he's potentially going to take a bit slow in this early game. Maybe looking just for a full clear. Going to do Raptors. Maybe he's scared of Lee Sin invading him here. There's the Lee Sin. And there you go. So, a bit disastrous here. He's going to lose his red. And he's so everyone's dying. If we look at the map state here, guys, you know, talking about playing from behind, I mean, you would say that the Kindred is a bit behind right now. I mean, mid's obviously getting absolutely pumped. Top's getting destroyed. You know, obviously Lee Sin's got some good momentum on him now. Um, and just to note here, guys, you know, he finishes this game 17 and 7. So playing from behind, if you guys want to get into that, let's get into it. Again, using this LPL aggression mindset, he just does not stop. So after that, the Lee Sin starts, he crosses, they want to deny the mark from the Kindred. It's interesting, the, the Lee Sin's level 4, 
with double buffs and he's still going for this. Leona could even be walking here as well. Looks like maybe he wants to just try and snag the smite potentially. He wants to try and greet, get the mark. So maybe his mark said is he's very happy to die for marks, which is a thing for Kindred. And he's able to solo kill the Lee Sin right there. LeBlanc picks up the double the double buffs. So the double buffs are getting transferred everywhere here. He gets Noon Quiver. And that's amazing. Like now he's actually, Kindred's actually very strong right now. That Noon Quiver item spike here at four minutes. So he's really just gotten himself back into the game here. But obviously the rest of his laners, we're struggling here. So it goes bot out of base. All right, really interesting here. Look at this. He um, obviously knows his red buff's gone. So he does Krugs. Uh, this is what, again, we've noticed in that first game, every time, you know, his laners are looking to push up or something, or like, you know, he sees Leona here, his first play is aggressive play. Let's go straight. We're going to invade into the enemy jungle with Thresh. So he's coming up here, looking for the Gromp, looks like. Nah, solo kills his Trinomir again. And just takes the Gromp. Not really worrying about bot here at all. Gets the control ward down for some vision. And then we see Lee Sin top and just goes straight for the dragon. He has no smite, but he has pops popping. With Noon Quiver, you can definitely do this. With Noon Quiver, you probably can't do this without smite, to be honest, as Kindred, I believe. So again, that Noon Quiver advantage coming in handy. His top dies again. For is that the fourth death? Looks bot, identifies it's not really diveable, just goes back to his camps. And he's just assumed he's lost all his top camps, so he's just going here and he'll mark spawn on the crab, which is pretty convenient, gets his second mark. So it's not like he's doing really good for marks this game as well here, guys. You know, again, his team's 2-8. and eight. Remember, guys, he finishes the game 17 kills or 18 kills or something like that. So he's just looking here, clearing this ward. Lee Sin could have reset and come back. Okay, Lee Sin is here. Yeah. Lee Sin could have taken his top camps or he's looking to defend his bot camps. And when you're ahead, your team, you know, I talk about the mindset a lot in my videos, and matching, matching the enemy jungler. So Lee Sin's doing a good job here to match the Kindred. He's not letting him just trade sides here. All right. Love the patience there, getting out of vision, waiting for them to commit. Lee Sin is level six. Kindred is level five. And we're winning this fight here. We go, and he just picks up two kills there and he's on three marks. I just want to note here, guys, would you just run up here, you know, when you see Lee Sin here, or would you look at look at him, his movement here. He goes back. Look at those clicks. He goes back. It's beautiful. He's baiting, using vision to his advantage. Lee Sin's trying to make Lee Sin think that this is a one fight because he's level six and these guys are level five. So I really like this. This is game-winning stuff, really game-winning stuff. Just that tiny click, that one click, baits him out, bam. We're, we're, we're back in the game here. I mean, it's all up to him to, to carry this game because his top's getting absolutely demolished. So he decides not to recall. He does have 1,600 gold in his inventory, but he just wants to come and do his Krugs. Reset. Gets a goodbye. Doesn't have his Kraken Slayer yet. I think he's built in. Clears his top camps. Cool. Now he's looking top. Gets seen on awards. Probably not really a top player anymore. We could probably assume Lee Sin's potentially topside. Don't he chose bot? Okay, let's see what he does here with the information that Lee Sin's bot. Let's see what aggressive play Tian's going to do here. Okay, he's doing the Herald. The enemy now could be defending this, but doesn't want to. Is Lissandra's base in? I definitely do somewhat think this is a pretty aggressive Herald. I mean, his, his mid lane was base in. Oh, she TP'd back, so I guess it's fine. I don't know if he knew that. All right, so takes the Herald. Insta reset. He goes for Kraken Slayer. Same principle as game one. Remember the moment he had enough gold for his, his, his first mythic, his item spike, he resets. He probably could have invaded here and looked for the top camps, but he just wants to get on the map ASAP. Reset, straight bots. So again, we're looking at that trend here. I, know I see this all the time, really important. Reset on your mythic. It's a huge power spike for him. All right, here we go. Getting aggressive again. Remember, guys, the scoreline is still 4 to 10, you know? He's obviously strong, but it's going to be up to him to play these fights really well. Mm. 
At least I doubt it's going to queue onto that. Is he going to flash after this? He is. Of course he is. Gets out there with Thresh. Herald's bot. And look to take the second dragon here. There is some back pings here. So it looks like his team doesn't really want to do this, but he's just going for it. It's really close. We know LeBlanc's probably around. And there's the LeBlanc and he's dead. So he's happy to trade his life potentially for that dragon. Has a dragon soul win condition. He's sort of laughing a little bit. And the VOD. And he's died. So again, still struggling this game, guys. Everyone's dying. Everyone's falling around. Remember, he finishes his game. 17, 18 kills. Absolutely carries this game. So he does have four marks, which is a really good... Uh, that's when a bit of a spike for Kindred, the four marks, when he has four marks of his passive. And Trinomere is able to solo kill him three levels down. Okay. Interesting. That's definitely good for him. Looks to push mid here since the Sandra's bot. And just decides to get another mark here. Defends mid, catches the wave. All right, here we go. Jumping in for a fight. Living on the skin of his teeth. Look at this again, the same thing, same thing here, playing around the vision. You see how he's not just running here and just hitting this? He's like, he's trying to like, again, utilize that vision, making sure the enemy team is just not giving free information to the enemy team of where his location is. He waits, sitting out of vision, waits till this ward is cleared, then moves. Really like that mindset, just not giving, making the enemy team work for the information, making them work for the vision of uh, where the kindred is. Trying to bait a fight potentially, right? And I guess that works for them again. The enemy team think that they can fight because they think maybe Kindred based. Kills the Blanc, stays for the Wolves, and then gets caught here, it looks like. Nope. Tian is not getting caught. He's strategically fighting. <laughs> Actually, again, it's hard to say. I don't even know, guys. You know, I mean, obviously, he's again very confident um, in definitely the way he's playing these champions, champion mastery. Um, but yeah, he's definitely um, his three thousand gold is inventory. He definitely knows how to uh, push these fights to his limits. Resets has a two item spike, and he has hex drinker coming down straight bot here. Gets red buff, helps his Trinimia. And just straight up kills LeBlanc. Six marks, gets the third dragon. So we got Dragon Soul. We already got Dragon Soul win condition here in five minutes, guys. You know, despite the early game. Despite the early game that they had. Cleaning up, cleaning up. He's pinging his ult for his team. Looks like he wants to bait it out, but he just gets one shot. Worthy attempt. I see the intention. Again, his mindset is to bait. Bait, 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 bait. All right, comes straight out of base. And then what does he do? Just dies again. Q's over the wall. That is LPL aggression right there, guys. It's continuing to walk forward. Bit ambitious there, I think, Mr. Tian. But again, the mindset is definitely there. He does not turn it off. All right, his team's looking to surrender. Luckily, they don't surrender because they do win this game again. He has like 17 kills. So let's look at a couple more fights. Oh, wait, he actually presses yes. Did he press yes there? 
Oh, he was the one that surrendered. <laughs> okay. All right. So obviously, maybe he's not that confident in his abilities. Maybe he's potentially a bit tilted. I mean, again, that was a little bit on his fault. He has queuing over the wall with no vision in the river, you know. All right, good card in back here. He has ult, gets the ult off. Fantastic. Survives that for a long time. And they're probably going to be able to come back on the map and get soul. No, the soul is denied since his team dies. Enemy team's trying to do Baron here. He doesn't have ult up for 13 seconds. That does make him a little bit weaker. He's able to at least kill the jungle. That's going to potentially prevent the Baron. Okay. Didn't expect him to survive that, but I guess Thresh Lantern has saved him. Thresh is probably the perfect jungler to be playing with TN, honestly. I mean, support champion with the way TN plays. So maybe getting a little bit lucky here from his Thresh, unless he's calculating the Thresh Lantern. Team gets a bit caught, gets the Grump, runs away. Lee Sin doesn't let him get away here at all, and he's going to die again. Enemy team gets Baron. All right, so the dragon's coming up, which is going to be their soul. Heals off the Gromp. This is a really good position for the Kindred. The enemy team is throwing pretty hard here, but again, really like that over the war. He has insane range with eight marks here. Fantastic. And then they get Dragon Soul. Really good position here in terms of the team fight here. Just that, sort of the identification of the entire team. They just know to walk up here. I guess they're getting sort of cut off here through bot, so... They decide to just come through here. Yep, yeah, good move. He actually decides not to smite the Gromp to get full HP. He wants to save the smite for the fight, his red smite. All right, so they get Dragon Soul. He just is able to absolutely just one-shot this guy. Look at that damage with the Collector. It's like 1,600 damage total for the Execute there. All right, he's got his 17 kills here. R insane Q, that's game winning stuff. Dodging absolutely every skill shot. And there we go, that's the gonna be the GG. All right, another great example here, guys, of that aggression. Again, there is some downside to it. As we said, some of the deaths are over the top a little bit. But uh, again, just a great example of just confidence champ mastery. Let's jump into the last game, guys. All right, last game here. This is Tien's Lee Sin into Kiana. Same thing as last game that we reviewed, the Kindred game. He loves this, this late invade onto the red buff. Still even has his smite. One thing you notice here, Tien is not afraid to be on low HP, guys. He's just baiting the enemy team left, right, and center. Like, he, like look at the way Graves is playing this. He has no. He obviously has no idea that Tien still has smite. It's impossible to get this. He doesn't realize that he's just going to get absolutely slaughtered. It's just not even close. He even goes in on that Q and then gets the kill there. Kiana's the jungler. Graves is not the jungler, I need to remember. So Graves is top. Takes these. He's probably pretty low here, but this is going to be a fantastic reset for him. Probably going to reset on pickaxe. 
He's pinging. I love, again, look at the, the, the common thing we're also seeing from his games. He's always pinging where the enemy jungler is going to be going. Really good tracking for the enemy jungler. Reset, pickaxe. Heals up for a little bit, but really doesn't want to spend too much time in base. Comes there when he's about 75% HP. He's one camp off level three, so he gets his level three. I talk about this a lot of my videos. Get level three before do anything else. It's a huge spike for your champion. Check in bot. Looks like he's going to skip all his camps to come here and kill this. I believe he knows that bot has no sums as well because I think they fought. I'm not sure if he was checking that information. Comes down here for a simple gank here. Lux has no curse. This is just going to be an absolute sort again. This, this is going to be a quick review, guys. But again, just sort of just showing you guys the power of resets here. You know, he didn't just go top side here, you know, clear his camps. I guess he was low, so he probably could do it anyway. But, you know, let's say even if it was full HP, this is still the correct play. It's really good stuff. And you also can tell this as well, guys. Um, I don't know if he's thinking about this, but the enemy bot wave right now is going to be bouncing back. I think they get it into the tower right here. So you're already thinking right now that bot's going to be gankable eventually here. So looks like the enemy, his bot lane, if he checks it. I guess he just resets anyway. He probably isn't thinking about that bot wave, but yeah, that's just why it goes back. It just bounces back here. So kills bot, and then they kill there. So I think we're just going to wrap this game up. But uh, again, sort of showing you, he loves his lady invades on the red buff. Um, and he's again, he's not afraid to be low HP to bait the enemy team out. He loves doing that. All right, that's it for our TN review here, guys. Let's try and adopt this in our, in our games. You know, again, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's really refreshing to sort of see, you know, just the confidence in this guy's gameplay, you know, the baiting that's, that, that, that is the enemy team, the skirmishing prowess. You know, he's, he really is not afraid to die, which again, is sort of counterintuitive to like my coaching philosophy, talking about valuing your life. I mean, he still does value his life, but he's, he just loves limit testing. But he does still play the champs that are rewarded quite a bit from doing it as well. You know, like the, the Kindred, the Viego. So take what you want from this game, guys. That's it. We'll see you in our next video.